I think that looks pretty good. It's as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> Dealing with human people here. No perfect people allowed. One of these days I'm gonna stab myself with this thing since it's always open. You know better, so you could do better. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 116. Wow, I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where we're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. What are you doing? Playing with my new headband. I'm so excited. <laughs> This is one of those weekends where we get to re wear red, white, and blue and like cheer, cheer everybody on. Happy Memorial Day. Yes. It's the day all about the sales. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, we'll get into that later, what it's really all about. But yes, there are a lot of sales during Memorial I Day weekend. I love Memorial Day because, first of all, for me as a kid, Memorial Day was always like, that was the start of the summer, right? You, yeah. You lived up in New York. And we lived on the water, so, but it was just like Memorial Day is when you start going swimming. Before then, the day before Memorial Day, water's too cold. On Memorial Day, you can go swimming. Well, that was something I never understood as somebody that grew up in Florida when you guys were like, we opened the pools right. for mem at Memorial Day. And it's like, aren't the pools open all the time? Yeah, it's like, no. no, not until Memorial Day. <laughs> That's it's so funny. weird. I said to Anthony, we were in the pool store the other day, and I said, that's the next thing that I'm saving money for. I want to get a pool heater, so we use our pool during the winter. He goes, you don't use the pool during the summer. He's I like, do. come on. He's like, Dad, let's be real. You, you jump in the pool right around Memorial Day. You guys use it for about three weeks, and then you don't get back in the pool. I'm like, well, we live a busy life. But maybe if I heat it during the winter, like, I'll actually go in the pool. Well, I have actually been in You've the been pool. You've been living in the pool. I have been living in the pool because it is so hot here all of a sudden. In, right. that I have been doing all of my writing in the pool. I know, it's been interesting to see. Crazy. Say. Let's talk about some of the Memorial Day sales. So first of all, we got the coolest ice maker using a Memorial Day sale because I think Memorial Day is the best time to buy appliances. It seems yeah. to be as a, an avid shopper couponer and I watch prices all the time. Prices are always the best right now. Not after Thanksgiving, now. You know what else is good? What? Mattresses. A lot of people buy mattresses oh. on Memorial Day. Every mattress sale is always going into business though, right? I know. Have you ever, ever, no, I've never driven past a mattress store that, isn't that doesn't going out say of business. going out of business. You've been going out of business for 20 years. Yeah, that's the Why name of the store. Why are you having store. a going out of business sale? So anyway, we bought a new refrigerator because ours was on the brink. Last and, leg. Uh, Rachel is in love with our refrigerator because it this makes is the ice it makes. Balls. It makes ice balls. <laughs> And I'm all about it. Wait, don't put that away. I'm gonna put it in my. It it does. Yeah, but it goes better with something like this because it's technically a craft ice, so it's like made for whiskey and stuff. It but. goes with everything. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of quick sales. Get that out of the way, so we can move on to the keto on the couch. So, if you are watching this on Monday, you still have today left to get in some Memorial Day sales. Three best sales I know of. Number one. Keto Chow. Keto Chow. Keto Chow is having 30% off. What? Don't get root beer. Root beer is awesome. Get get another flavor. Like what? Caramel Macchiato? Caramel Macchiato. You're just saying that because we made that. No. Well, chocolate toffee, okay. chocolate, peanut butter. Root beer. So long as it's not black licorice. Okay, so 30% off of the Go Packs. Now, you know what the Go Packs are? Is that like this? So the Go Packs, what they did was, you know, people like the individual packs. Like, I love the individual packs. Yeah, of right? course. Uh, but they're expensive. Like, they are $4.75 for one. Versus as the big opposed bag. to the big bag, which is $70. So you spend a lot more money. I think you spend $30 more. It's convenient, For 21 though. meals buying it this way. 
So they have these things called Go Packs, where you get 21 of these. Oh, nice. Okay. And right now, 30% off the Go Packs. So that's actually cheaper than buying in the big bag. Is that like a bundle? Yeah, it's a Go Pack oh, bundle. Okay. You get 30, 21 of a specific flavor. Like, I want a Go Pack of Root Beer Float. So you're going to get 21 no individual meals of, of Root Beer Float. Nobody's doing that. It's normally 100 bucks, but right now, for Memorial Day, today's the last day, if you're watching this on Monday, it's 30% off. So that's actually coming out to be the same price as buying the big bag. Can you have a Go Bundle of Caramel Macchiato? I think so. I don't know. Worth I trying. Know. I don't know. How fun. So uh, use the link down below. The link won't give you any extra money off, but it does help support the channel. We really got appreciate you guys for helping support the channel. Thank you. By using the links down below. People ask us all the time, like, how can I help support you guys? Just simply, if there's something that we represent or something on Amazon, if you go through any of the links down below, that helps support the channel. If you click on any one of our Amazon links, even if you don't buy the product you click on, yeah. we get a tiny, it's a tiny percent, like a half a percent, but it's something and it adds up and it helps support the channel. And it doesn't like cost- buy more lights. Well, and it doesn't cost you anything. Right. Uh, next one is Equip. Equip. Equip is having a Memorial Day sale. We just put a post up in our Facebook group about it. It's, uh, they're doing 20% off of all of their products. I love this stuff. And uh, $60 or more, you get free shipping, which is can be expensive. Like I had just placed a big order with them and I think my shipping was like $26. Of course, I ordered stuff the day before the sale. Right. So, uh, but and that's yeah, always what we $26 do. $26 in shipping. So free shipping over 60 bucks, 20% off. Um, I did talk to them and uh, chocolate is still out of stock. Hmm. They're looking at like the second week of June for chocolate to be back in stock. Okay. So well, at least um, we have a ETA. And then final big sale that we know of. Oh, link by the way is down below for Equip. You got to use that link for the sale. Uh, final one is Perfect Keto. I'm drinking that. Um, yes, I'm actually Strawberry. drinking peanut butter. Uh, so pe all the all of their products. Buy one product, I think it's buy one product, get 10% off. Buy two products, 15. Buy three or four, you get 25, I believe. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong on these numbers. <laughs> uh, and buy five or more, I know it's 35% off. Yeah. So link for that, again, it's is like down 10, below. 15, 25, 35. Yeah, I believe that that's how it goes. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of the sale talk out of the way, mm -hmm. can we talk about what Memorial Day is actually all about? Meat and barbecues. It is not about that. I mean, we have we will have a barbecue right. on Memorial Day, and I love getting together with family. But actually, Memorial Day is a very serious thing. Oh wait, wait, serious? Yes. Serious, I, serious. I mean, I know it's hard serious for me to be face. serious with this headband. It's but very, it's very difficult to have a serious face with you wearing that. On but your head. sometimes this holiday gets jumbled with every other patriotic holiday because you've got Armed Forces Day, and right. that's when we celebrate and honor the people who are currently serving our country. Then you have Veterans Day, where we take a time to, um, you know, honor people who have served right. in the past and are veterans. But Memorial Day is specifically for those people who died while they were serving our country. And right. this is an opportunity for us to honor and also mourn, yeah. you know, those people and to thank the families yeah. who who basically, you know, they're, they're part of this too, that mm -hmm. their family has given the full measure of dedication, as Abraham Lincoln said, you know, to the service of this country. Yeah. So we just want to take a moment to just remember the people who have fallen for this country and to thank the families of all the family members who lost their lives. Yeah. So let's talk about our week because this was a busy week. Crazy. It has been a crazy uh, week. Living with you is just crazy in general. I know. But. <laughs> That's probably true. But um, it's been really busy and I cannot believe that we are already to June. I know, right? How? Tomorrow is June 1st. How? Which reminds me. We're going, I, I don't know why I thought Tuesday was, uh, Tuesday was May 31st. So what that means is my whole video schedule is screwed up because yeah. I have a video coming out yesterday right. and then we have a video today, which is always cute on the couch. And then tomorrow, which I thought was May 31st is supposed to be the announcement of like what the June challenge is, but it's gonna be June 1st. Yeah, So Too that late. is gonna come out later on today. If you're watching this during the premiere, which is at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm saying, hello, so how are you? I'm gonna pull that up real quick. So basically, this is what our June challenge is. It's Camp Crazy. Yeah. Pack your bags. So 
Camp Crazy is going to be our June challenge, and uh, it's going to be fun. So make sure you watch that movie later on today. Yeah. We've got such a busy summer coming up, and so we're trying to make all our plans. And I just this morning, I booked our tickets to go to... To Salt Lake. Kino Salt Lake already We're going passed. out to vi visit Chris and Miriam, and we're going to go visit Redmond, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm so excited about that. I think we may be doing some kind of meetup, but I'm not sure. I have to talk to Chris and Miriam about that. That's in the middle of July. That's in the middle of July. It's it's a month and a half away. I can't believe it. Right after Anthony turns 21. Oh my gosh. Two 21 year olds. Two 21 year olds. Well, no. Yes. Know, well, Caleb's two, not. Two over 21. Yeah. Yes. Two of our children are <laughs> over 21. All three of our children are in their 20s now. Yes. It's kind of like, wow. Wow. But it, it was just, it was one of those weeks where like so much needs to get done. And so our our menu this week was very simple. It's like, what do we have defrosted that we can throw together? And it was eating things like pancakes with steak. Yeah. Or pancakes with ground beef. Well, I actually found out something else about myself that I think, I mean, I probably already always knew, but now I'm on the, the lookout for it. And that is... I noticed that a um, a time for me to want a snack and get off of meal plan is when I am completing a creative project because I finished basically like a workbook this week and I never stopped and thought like, why am I super like crazy hungry and snacky during this week? And it's just all together with finishing a project. I don't know why. I don't think that makes everybody hungry, right. but it was definitely something where I had to be super intentional all day long this week because I was very much in danger of falling off the wagon. And it's funny because I'm the complete opposite. Now I do want to say, wait, let's clarify. Yeah. Falling off the wagon for Rachel does not mean falling no. off a of keto wagon. It means like just, just eating outside snacking, of my plan. Like tons of drive-bys in the refrigerator yeah. and things like that. Which I just I want to make sure people like it's not falling off the wagon. Like there's not a chance that we're ever going to go and eat a bunch of non-keto foods. No. We don't even keep them in the house. But I could graze all day. Right. Like unintentionally right now for me it's complete opposite what i discovered was the busier i am the less i think about food well wow. my downfall is when i've got nothing to do or not very much to do but you know like i was installing a refrigerator um uh, cutting cabinets um putting water lines in washing cars washing the rvs um moving bricks like every day there was like 15 things on my project list. And so I never had a chance to sit down. And that was along with working and editing videos and everything else. So if I'm constantly busy, I don't even think about food. I could go till seven or eight o'clock without even eating or thinking about food, which is very unique in this relationship because Rachel, when she's working, is thinking about food. Yeah. And so she's like, I want to eat. And I'm like, I want to work. And it's so we have to really deal with it and have a plan for that. We right. noticed this week because, you know, I'm mad at you because the like we're not ready to sit down and eat. And you're like, well, I'm very busy. We'll get to it later. Right. And so I'm like, let me finish this. It's neither one of us is wrong. Right. It's just we're different people. So for some people, you guys may identify with me where you're like, it's almost like, keep going. Yes, let's keep going. I almost have like Pac-Man syndrome. Like right. as I'm moving, I want to eat. And yours is the opposite. Maybe somebody else identifies with Joe where it's like the only way that I can stay out of the pantry is to stay busy. Right. But it's just interesting that, we, that we're different, but together. Yeah. And then in the midst of all of that, like I was having allergy attacks like several times during the week, which makes me miserable to right. deal with. So that's huge. Aww. Well, you were so too it, bad. The, well, the allergy attacks brought lots of inflammation, which brought frustration on the scale because for some stupid reason, I decided to step on the scale. Well, it's just a dumb move. It, it is just because the scale is the devil. Is the devil. We, so. we, we, but we're always preaching to the choir. I know. Right? Like we know. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. That... Ask any pastor, whatever he's preaching on on Sunday is probably something that he's like struggled with, right? Like, I mean, unless it's like in affairs or something. But. Now, 
I am looking forward to, well, for us, it's later today on Memorial Day, even though right now it's not later today. Like We're filming this on Saturday. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to Memorial Day in the afternoon because we're going camping at a local park that we have both been to, I don't know, 20, 30 times. Yeah. We go over there sometimes and we play disc golf. Rachel practically grew up in the park, although now she doesn't like it because it's... Im- it's got a lot of iguanas. Lots of lizards. It lots did not have that. Lots big lizards. Like dinosaur lizards. We did not They'll get... They'll eat your dog. We did not get a ton of these iguanas and lizards that you see in South Florida now until after Hurricane Andrew. Right. Hurricane Andrew is where you started to see a turn. And then I feel like everybody was like, well, there's already a ton of like lizards and snakes out. So if I have a pet that's a reptile that I just don't feel like caring for anymore, let them be wild. And like they release them because there's like already a whole bunch of lizards. And now it's hard to find a traditional normal small lizard, right? right? Because they've been totally moved out by all these crazy dinosaurs. Right. So what we ended up deciding to do was that our next big camping trip is actually in the middle of June. Yeah. Where we're heading up towards the Orlando area. We're actually going to be meeting up with Lori. Yes, Miss Lori. And somebody else is up in that area messaged and said, hey, when you're up here, and I said, hey, this is when we're going to be here. Yeah. So we're excited about that. And then we will be doing a regular camping meetup. Um, we're not camping meetup, but a regular meet up at a campground uh, later on in the year. I think we're doing it in November. November. Uh, it was supposed to be in August, but because we're now going out to Omaha, that's getting shifted. But I think Keto Palooza is in August. No, it, it's not. What is it? Keto Palooza is in September. Is it? August is Omaha. It's again a busy I week. Just don't it's a even busy know. Like, year, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like one thing after the other. So And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> so um because that's our next major camping trip, and we we really do make the intention of every other week we're going out. Number one, because we have the RV, we're paying for it, so you might as use well it. use it. But number two, it's great for our relationship. It's a great for us, a great way for us to disconnect and get outside and just not focus on work. Because when we're in the house, we're working. Yeah. And the only way we don't work is to go away. So I said, hey, let's go to this local campground. It's five minutes down the road. And it, it does cost $5 more than a lot of the state parks, but I don't have to pay for gas. I was going to say, how much are we Any safe? of that kind of stuff. And I think we've hit on something brilliant. Because here's the thing. We can have everybody come to the campsite. Right. We can have food. We can have games. We can have an enjoyable afternoon. Nobody's tracking through my house. That's right. Nobody's getting anything. Dirt. I don't have to deep clean this week. On I don't top have to of, lower the temperature of the house to 70 degrees just to get it to 75. Why have we not been doing this all along? Yeah. We can get together locally without messing up the house. So yeah, we're going to bring the RV over there and we're going to camp. And then everybody's going to come over and have Memorial Day with us. And then after that, we're just going to basically camp down the road for three days. But, like, I still have to work on Tuesday. I can go to work because I'm home. Yeah. And then just work for three hours and then get right back over there. And, again, like, cares and all of that kind of stuff stuck at home, not in the RV. I'm excited. I need to unplug sometimes, right? Do you need to unplug? How? Absolutely. What do you do to unplug? Yeah, what do you do to unplug? And if you haven't taken any time to unplug in recent months – here, here's your reminder. Go unplug. Plan to unplug. You need some unplugging. Can I unplug from like this? No. No. Let's Yay. do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all of our different comments and our subscriber of the week. Yay! I'm cheering for you. I'm going to be cheering for everybody today. Now, if you are new to our channel down below right now, we are live if you are watching this at 10 a.m., in the chat. I know this confuses people a lot yeah. of times. They're like, I don't get it. Are you live or you're not live? No, the, the video is pre-recorded, but then when it airs at 10 a.m. Monday, we're Eastern typing. time, we're live in the chat. Now, if you want to actually be in a live video with us, that is every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. 
In addition, we live stream at least once a month for our Patreons. There's a link down below for that. And then sometimes we just like popping in for other lives, either here or popping on our by. Facebook group. Call so, us Mary Poppins. So that is like, that's the schedule of our live. It's always Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Before we do move on, I do want to remind everybody, if you have not done it yet, please head down below, hit the like button on this video. It really helps us get out into the YouTube world. Um, maybe one day we'll be able to hit 50,000 subscribers. Oh my gracious. That would be awesome. Can you I, imagine? I, guess I want the 100,000 subscriber plaque. That's what I want. That'll we need be your so help. Cute. Well, here's the thing. Did you know that 60% of the people who watch our videos, they're not subscribed? How? They're not subscribed. Aww. So it's free. So head down below, hit that little subscribe button. And then while you're there, hit the bell notification because that's going to let you know whenever we do go live or something like that. But Yay! yeah, you want to hit that number up there. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. So let's move on. Let's get into the Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. I can never remember to say that right. Right. So this is somebody who put up an inspirational post this week, which... We always like to be inspired because you guys keep us going. And so when you put something up, I know it keeps a lot of other people going. It's true. And this week's is from Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Aaron said, shout out to everybody making progress that no one recognizes because you never let anyone see your darkest moments. Wow. You've been silently winning battles and transforming yourself. Be proud of every step you're making in the right direction. Keep going. Because you got this. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yes. Yay! We're <laughs> cheering for that because you're right. Sometimes people do don't realize how low you start, like how sad. Right. I, I, you know, we never talked about like how sad I used to be, mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how bad you felt. A lot of times people don't even know what your starting weight was right. or what is was the depth of the health problems that you were facing because you don't share that until after you're out of the woods, so I to speak. I honestly don't know what my starting weight was. I know what my weight was the last time that I got on a scale before starting keto. Right. But I don't know what my starting weight was, which I have a feeling was higher than what I say was my starting weight. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it's just, I mean, I, I, the last time I got on a scale, it was 289 or mm -hmm. th yeah, 289. Yeah. But I have a feeling I got past that. I just, when you see 289. You just don't want to get back I on. I just never wanted to get back on I don't want to see it. You know, but it was like another week or two after seeing that number that I actually started keto. So who knows? But in all of the times, what is 116 episodes of Keto on the Couch? I don't yeah. think I've ever seen that acknowledgement before. Yeah. That's that, that really, really cool. Good. Thank you very much for that inspiration. Okay, now let's get into our subscriber of the week. Now, again, if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. There's a link down below. Again, completely free to join. And we ask you, go over there. First of all, there are awesome people in there sharing recipes, sharing stories, asking questions, answering questions. But also, they talk about their struggles. They talk mm -hmm. about successes they've had. And we ask you, go share your story because your story is going to inspire someone. There is somebody out there right now going, I don't know if I can do this. Nobody else knows what it's like. I don't have a gallbladder. I had type two diabetes. Nobody, you don't know what it's like, but there are people. Yeah. And when you go and share your story, they're gonna look and go, oh, somebody else does get it. I can, they did it, I can do it. Yeah. And that's why we ask you to share. It's not about content, it's about inspiring other people because that's what Two Crazy Ketos is about. We're about being a family, we're about being there to inspire each other, to motivate each other, and to just help people get through this, this weight loss issue, right? Yeah. Okay, so this week's subscriber of the week is Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Brenda said, I began this journey in December of 2020. Five months later, 30 pounds less, I feel great. My goal is to lose 20 more. I am very thankful for this group and the encouragement I receive daily reading the comments, see, and watching videos. Yay, wow. Wow, what a difference. Way to go. I love that you saved the shirt. That makes such a difference. You look so beautiful. What a difference, right? I mean, what gorgeous. What a difference. So, so gorgeous. But yes, yeah, so if you haven't yet taken like your starting picture, 
Maybe you're just getting started on keto. Make sure you save one shirt. You don't have to save the whole closet full, right. but I would save that one shirt so that you can see your progress. That is a better measure of progress than even the scale. Yeah, the scale is, is just not a good measure. It's a good measure at the beginning. Yeah. But later on, as you start losing fat and maybe gaining muscle or just losing fat and the weight loss slows, but the sizes are going down. Yeah. And but you don't always see that. You're looking at this number and it can be really discouraging. And that's why we say the scale is the devil. Okay, let's get into the comments. We're gonna start off with the comments from last week's YouTube video. The first one is from Laura. Hey, Laura. She says, miss seeing Anthony. How <laughs> sweet. We told him that and he was just like, he just lit up. So thank you for sharing so that. So for those of you who don't know, our middle son Anthony actually joins us for the keto box opening. So yeah. there's two boxes. There's the keto crate and the keto box. The keto box, we actually purchase every single month just for that video. Yeah. Because we do have a lot of fun making it with Anthony and that's where Anthony actually eats everything in the box and gives you his brutal honest opinion on it. Yeah, because he's not keto, but something that kind of has come in, come out of our journey and something that is happening that in your realm of influence that you may not even notice is as you take a closer look at packages, whether the people in your life go keto or not, we noticed that Anthony and John Paul and, and Caleb have all started scrutinizing ingredients more. Yes. So it was, which I love. Whether or not they go keto or not, like that is up to them. They're adult people that make their own decisions. But I just love that whatever they're choosing to put in their mouth, they're at least taking a moment to say like, is this my choice? Is this right. I want? Like you know? look at the amount of chemicals that are in here. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. Uh, next one is from Lovin' Low Carb Life 86. Awesome. Said, question on your pancake recipe. Can I substitute out keto chow and use a different protein powder? Okay, so um, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, you can, but you can't. You can because you can, it'll work with other protein powders, but you're not gonna get anywhere near the same result. I have tried it with several different protein powders. I tried it with Isopure, I tried it with Equip, I've tried it with an egg protein. Um, none of them give you the texture and the fluffiness and everything about it that you get when you use Keto Chow. And it's because of the milk protein isolate and the xanthan gum and the all of the ingredients that are in there work together to make it almost like a flour. The other ones are going to give you a very different thing. The, the egg white protein, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't even attempt it. Yeah. I did get a result, but it's not the result I was looking for, <laughs> but it is bringing in another recipe using the egg white protein. But you can use a quip, but it's gonna give you a completely different thing. And we actually have that, we're talking about it, I'm right now working on like a blintz recipe using a quip. So it, it gives you, kind of a pancake, but it's more of a crepe. So if you want that fluffy pancake, you gotta use keto chow. But that is gonna bring up a subject <laughs> that we I get with want every, to discuss. Every single recipe. And I don't know how to discuss this without being mean. I know. But listen, if we know when we make our recipe videos, or when we write it, when we write them out, and the pancake one isn't even on the website. We made the video, but I, I have not had time to actually put it on the website. But when we make our, if we know of a substitute, we're going to mention it in the video or we're gonna put it in the recipe. Yeah. If we don't know of a substitute, we I don't know it. if it's gonna work. Yeah. You know, or if I don't say it, it's probably either A, I know, I know it won't work, or B, I don't know because I didn't have that ingredient. So, but we get people who message us like, well, can I substitute, like, can I substitute out chicken breast for steak? Oh, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's going to be a very different result when you do that. Well, right? and my thing is, if you want to substitute something, try it. I have, you know, on your own. Right. I have no guarantee that it will work. Right. If you're willing to use those ingredients and take your time to try it, try it. But what I can guarantee is the recipe we made using the exact ingredients that we did, and this is what happened. Right. Like, I, I got a message yesterday from someone who said, like, I tried to make your yogurt recipe, and uh, I used too good yogurt as the culture, and it didn't work. Well, in our recipe video, we don't use I specifically that. told you to use 
the Faye Greek yogurt because I like the cultures are in there. There's so many variables. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell you like what happened, but I can tell you in that instance, it's probably your culture. Yeah. You know, like I can tell you with our yogurt recipe, if you have a problem with the yogurt, either A, you heated up your cultures beyond like 110 degrees, which would kill them, which means now they're not going to be able to give you the yogurt or B, you're not using live cultures. Because we have, I make that recipe every other day and I have yet to have one fail. Well, and my advice would be make it the way we make it first as so long as you don't have any allergy situations. Make right. it the way we make it first and then change right. it how you see fit. Yeah. Because then you know what you're starting with. If you want to go into a recipe and you're like, you know, again, this is if you don't have any allergies. Obviously, if we make a peanut butter recipe and you have a peanut well, allergy, then don't, make the recipe. then don't, I wouldn't make the recipe. But if you're like, okay, we're going to make the yogurt, make it the way we make it first and then change it once you've seen like, oh, okay, this is the standard and then now I'm going to vary it. Right. And even our yogurt recipe, We've simplified it even more than the first one. So we have the first one where we use nut milk bags. Nut milk bags. And I stir it and we strain it in the refrigerator and you let it sit. Now, here's what we do, literally. And, and you go watch the video, I'm gonna link right here where we make the low fat version. You can do the same thing for the full fat version. But here's what I do. Two giant spoons. How much of the yogurt culture? Don't know. I throw two giant spoons in there, like two heaping tablespoons of culture in there. Dump the Fair Life milk. The reason we use either Fair Life or Ultra is because it's 50% sugar. You can use regular milk. The problem with using regular milk is it's got double the sugar. What makes Ultra and Fair Life different? Oh, is it more expensive? Yes. Yeah. What's making it better is they're removing the lactose or most of the lactose, which is where all the sugar is. That's why you're getting such a low carb yogurt. Okay. But we literally dump the cultures in, dump the milk in, stir it one time, top on, press start. Yeah. At the end of eight or to 10 hours, I usually run it for like nine hours. I dump it in a yogurt strainer, put it in the refrigerator, come back. I never stir it. I never mix it. I never let it sit. It's literally instant pot, yogurt strainer, pull it out, eat it. That's how easy it is. Yeah. So... If you're adding a bunch of steps, that could be what the issue is. Right. So, and we get a lot of, this is not coming at one person. We probably no. get 15 emails a week about different recipes. the yogurt one specifically. Well, I mean, I get different recipes so, that they're like, can I switch this out for that? And I'm like, oh yeah, we get those all Try the time. it. Okay. Next one, now that the rant is over, <laughs> is from Georgianne. Hey, Georgianne. Said, uh, one huge victory for me is to be able to cross my legs. Yes. It feels so good. I heard a doctor who talks about keto say the same thing. I've never heard or felt so connected as when I heard him say that. It is amazing to cross my legs. Yeah. I've only lost 15 pounds, but I've lost eight and a half inches wow. altogether. It's amazing. I really want to let go of that scale. It's a hard one. Thanks for all you do. Well, Georgian, first of all, awesome. Like, yay. That's super awesome. And I remember myself being able to, to cross my legs. And that was a huge victory. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think we celebrate that enough. Sitting crisscross applesauce. That right. was a huge one for me. Because I work with kids. I'm always serving kids. And so... Being able to get down and up and off the ground easily was was challenging. And then being able to sit crisscross applesauce on the ground was, it was just a huge goal for me. Right. I remember it was the same for you to cross your legs. Oh, I was always struggling to cross my legs. And that was even like bringing my foot up over my knee, you know, and just kind of sitting. And that was the only thing I can ever do to sort of feel comfortable. But yeah. even that was a struggle. Like I had to reach down, grab my foot, pull it up. Right. And now I don't even have to do that. I can just kind of sit with my knees crossed. So I find that I sit with my legs crossed more than probably most people. And I think some of it's just because I can, right? I For my whole life, I wasn't able to. And now I can. So I'm always sitting with my legs crossed. Well, and I love how she said that that was something that connected her. Like that doctor saying that very unique statement was something that she connected with in a way she hasn't connected with anything else. So again, share your story, share what you're going through, wins that you have, because every little detail really blesses people. Yeah. Uh, next one is from James. Hey, James. He says, Joe, you shocked me. 212 pounds? I thought you would be under 200. I've been stuck at 205 to 209 for the last three weeks. Six feet tall. 
The only saving grace is my fat pounds have been dropping during that time while my lean body has been growing, going up. I have a smart scale. My frustration came from a deal I made with a friend. If I get below 200 pounds, we would go skydiving. I have never done that. I stopped lifting last week. Hopefully that will help. You are proof to me that weight is just a number. You look healthy and great. My frustration is gone and I'm inspired again. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, James. Well, thank you, James, because you have no idea what that meant to me when I read it. Because so I don't feel the way you're describing me. See, like I look at myself and I just see the big fat guy. And because I'm up in weight, I'm I'm up 20 pounds from where I was a year and a half ago. And a lot of that is COVID. And, yeah. and some of it is I put on muscle because I've seen the same thing where like the fat pounds have gone down and like the lean mass has gone up, but it's still frustrating. And it's still been frustrating. I'm My size is bigger than it was, you know, pre-COVID. But I just look in the scale and I tell Rachel that I just see like the Joe pre keto. Wow. Like, that's what I see. Now, do I look that way? No, no, but that's where I look in my mind. Yeah. And so, again, we talk about like you guys inspire us. When I read that post, it inspired me because like I'm not happy with where I'm at. I mean, and again, I'm not where I was. And like, you know, and when I say where I was, I mean like three or four years ago. Yeah. But I'm not where I want to be. And I just keep having this drive to keep going further and getting back down to under 200 pounds because I was under 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate like you're putting that post up because it, it meant a lot to me. Well, and I appreciate it as his wife, you putting that post up. Thank you. <laughs> Next one is from Devin. Hey, Devin. Devin said, I just adore you both. Aw. Thank you for being there for all these people making comments. You both add so much to our lives. I fell off the bandwagon, but back on it on day two. Already feel better. Good. I started drinking keto chow, and although the flavor is great, the thickness is a bit too much for me. Thoughts on making it thinner? Just add more water? Yeah. I've tried both heavy whipping cream and the butter version, both with 14 ounces of water. Thanks. Yeah, I would thin it out with water. Okay, so when we drink a keto chow, like uh, this is our blender bottle, which we don't have any more of these, by the way. Really? I gotta take it off of the website. Um, I think when you use butter or you use uh, the heavy whipping cream and you add in 14 ounces of water, it usually comes to about here. When we make it, we fill it all the way up. We yeah. go all the way to the top. As a matter of fact, we make it in the Vitamix. We make three at a time usually. And I have extra that I have to then put the lid on and pour it through here because it's coming up right over, over the, the top. So there's no reason that you can't water it down. I like it a little bit thinner, you know? So if you want it, if you want to have, we want more volume. That's what it is for us. We want more volume. And then sometimes we may add some gelatin to kind of thicken it back up. Yeah. But for us, it's about volume, but you're not going to affect it if you add water, if you add coffee, even if you add some almond milk. Sometimes we'll add a little bit of almond milk in there to give it a little bit of a nutty flavor. Yeah. And then it's like, it's thinner, but not like watered down. Does right. that make sense? Like you can thin something out, but you don't want to taste a watery taste. Right. Uh, next one is from Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. She says, as I watched this episode today, I've seen two posts that you read that I had wrote. Your feedback to both posts was very much appreciated. Between you two and your Facebook family, I don't feel so alone on this journey as I had been. Depression is such an ugly thing, and I appreciate Rachel sharing her experience with it. Mental illness seems like a forbidden word that isn't supposed to be talked about. I'm so grateful to my keto lifestyle for freeing me from the chains of depression and so grateful for others who aren't afraid to share their battles and victories as well when it comes to their mental health. Keto has changed my life in so many ways these last few months, from my depression to my IBS. I feel so much better mentally and physically, and I'm so grateful to have real life down to earth people to share all of this with this. Thank you so much for saying that because it's very scary to share that you've had any, any mental illness at all. Like I have been treated in the past for mental illness. Like when, when I was younger and before I had Caleb and I was very, very scared going into pregnancy and postpartum times, um, after being treated for that. Um, 
especially I find, and I'm not trying to like, like negate what a guy would be going through, but I feel like it's another obstacle as a woman to be struggling with depression and or mental illness because you already feel like you're coming to the table at a disadvantage. I want to be taken seriously in whatever, um, you know, job or career or where whoever I'm with, I want to feel equal and I want to feel heard and I want to feel acknowledged. And sometimes when you make yourself vulnerable and you say, well, I've struggled with mental illness or I've struggled with depression or anxiety, all of a sudden people like want to back away from you. And sometimes it's just in your mind. Sometimes it's not true. I, I've never had an experience where once, you know, Joe has known something about me and like my struggle with mental illness, he didn't back away from me and been like, okay, not interested in dating you anymore. Um, but it's it's a struggle. It, you, and you don't want to share. You don't want to be vulnerable because you're afraid of how you're going to be treated or if people aren't going to listen to you or take you seriously. But I think it's very important that we talk about mental illness, that we talk about depression and anxiety, and we can talk about what keto can do for it, that you can start to have a better experience in your life thanks to keto. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Kristen said, I get heavy whipping cream from HEB, the store brand, and it has zero carbs. Oh, it doesn't though. It doesn't. Um, and this is why I, I put this comment in. So, and it's not a knock on you. It, no, this not at is, all. This is the way, unfortunately, the rules are when it comes to labels. Yeah. And they're allowed to round. <laughs> and... They're allowed to be off too. That's that's the scary part is their numbers don't even have to be super accurate because there is a margin of error. Like with anything, there's a margin of error and they could be pretty off and it's okay. But the way it works is if something, if you're eating something and it has what, we're gonna use carbs because that's what we're talking about. If it has less than um, a half a carb, they can put zero. They can put zero. If it has less than, I believe it's like 0.75, they can put less than one. Right. So what happens is you have heavy whipping cream and it actually has like 0.4 carbs per tablespoon. Mm -hmm. So they get to put zero. So now some of the companies will actually put one, but some of the companies put zero. But all heavy whipping cream has carbs in it, all of them, regardless of what the label says. And it comes down to portion size. When you multiply it out, it ends up showing up. And that's and that's the thing is you have to realize how they figure out calories and stuff. But one tablespoon is 0.4 carbs. So if you do an ounce, you're pretty much at a carb. Yeah. So when we talk about keto chow, why don't we use heavy whipping cream? First of all, because heavy whipping cream tends to give us a little bit of bloat, so yeah. we use it very sparingly. Unless we're making ice cream. But the other thing is, is that we would normally use four ounces of heavy whipping cream. Well, that works out to be like three carbs. Yeah. And so I don't want to add three more carbs on top of the other carbs I'm having today, on top of the carbs that are in keto chow and everything else. But all heavy whipping cream has carbs. Well, Speaking of labels and like what they're allowed to get away with, have you ever purchased a product where they will say that, that it has no nuts or anything in it, but it'll say like, this was made in a factory where they also have nuts. They're letting you know that maybe we didn't clean things the way we should have. And there's a chance that like some ingredient that has nothing to do with what you're purchasing could have fallen in there. Right. That's pretty much what they're doing is just like hedging those bets. Right. Because... They're, they are allowed to have, you know, mistakes. And we even had that when we first started working with Equip Nutrition, I immediately brought to them, like, I have a problem with the nutrition label. It doesn't have any carbohydrates. It didn't even have the label carbohydrate. And they explained to me that, well, because it falls less than zero, we don't have to put it. And I'm like, well, I don't like that. Yeah. And they ended up saying they, they are changing their label as their new bags come out. The labels are all being changed. 
but it's just something that you have to be aware of. It's like spices. Like people think you can just spice everything and add tons like, oh, there's zero carbs in like in chili powder. No, there's not. There's zero carbs in a quarter of a teaspoon, which is what they use as a serving size. Yeah. But when you multiply that out, like for example, our chili recipe, which needs three tablespoons, there is absolutely carbs coming from that chili powder. Well, and we just want to tell you the honest truth about those things so that you don't get to a place where you're like, gosh, I feel like I'm making all of these correct decisions and why am I experiencing a stall or a plateau or like in fact a weight gain? Right. It's all just hidden carbs. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Parrothead Renee. Hey, Renee. She says, oh my gosh, the anxiety thing. In college, I used to go behind the building to throw up before we had our filmed practical exams. And the morning of my licensure exam, I puked outside the car in the parking lot. Like, thank you for sharing that, Renee, because I had a similar experience. I had anxiety and problems my entire life. And in fact... All the way through high school, my mom never went anywhere without an extra outfit in the car for me because it was just a thing. I didn't want to like not participate in activities, but it was just a known fact. I probably was going to get sick if I put myself out there. Wow. Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we will come back with our Facebook comments. You didn't share not one bit of that peanut butter with me. Nope. Well, I'm not giving you any of my strawberries, so that's, take that. That's fine. We have a bunch of strawberries. We only have one peanut butter. <laughs> How do you do that? Let's get into our Facebook comments. Uh, first one is going to be from Ethan. Hey, Ethan. Ethan said, I just completed my first intentional fast. Wow. And it ended at 24 hours and 52 minutes with a couple of eggs. I'm really proud of myself. I'm super proud of you too, Ethan. That is That is challenging. If you've never done a fast before... Man, it's it is a a head battle. And the first twenty four hours is honestly the Toughest. hardest. Like I feel like when you get past twenty four hours, it's not so hard. But that first twenty four hours, Ooh. it's all a mind game. People are like, "How do you do it?" It's a mental mind game. And I would, I, I'm wondering if Ethan had the same situation. But that last hour of mm -hmm. it. That is the hardest part because when you see a finish line, yeah. you almost are like, "Oh, I'm close enough. I'm so close. Like close enough." Right. <laughs> Uh, next one is from Dan. Hey, Dan. Dan said, my wife and I are just starting a keto diet and have a lot to learn. One question is, my wife had her gallbladder removed, and I've heard there is some changes you have to do with not having a gallbladder. Is this true? And if so, what do we have to do for her? We started this several months ago, and she felt sick the whole time for two weeks. Thank you for any advice you can give us. Um, the biggest thing is, is the way you're going to eat the fat. Um, but again, we are not doctors or nurses or health practitioners of any sort. Uh, I can tell you what we've learned from experience and from reading. I highly advise you go check out Dr. Barry actually has a video on how to do keto without a gallbladder. There are several videos out about that. Yeah. Um, there are people in our Facebook group. If you go join our Facebook group, like your best friend Beth, yeah. one of them. Um, who do keto without a gallbladder. It is possible. You just have to change things up, not eating copious amounts of fat in one sitting. Uh, as far as the first two weeks, though, I'm curious of how she felt was it could have just been the keto flu, which is an electrolytes issue because a yeah. lot of people get that in the first couple of weeks. Well, but the... The big key with the gallbladder is the fat intake. Well, and also like weaning yourself off of sugar. Right. Like I felt like I was weaning myself off of heroin. I yeah. felt horrible when we kicked sugar. So just the sugar, getting rid of sugar out of my diet alone, I felt like I was going to die. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Amy. Hey, Amy. She says, looking for blood keto meter suggestions. Please don't tell me not to chase ketones. I like data and I like to know how I react to certain foods and situations. I have the new keto mojo and hate it. I've never read any ketones on it despite the old version showing upwards of 1.8 at the same time. It calibrated correct and the company insists it is more accurate than the older version. So I'm on the search for a new reliable, reliable meter. I can't read today. How do I know if I'm being knocked out of ketosis by certain foods when experimenting? I would expect some reading, not just low every time. Okay, so... Um, this, this is actually two comments in one. Yeah. Okay. So that, how do I know? That was her response when I responded to her, but I thought this was really important to talk about. That's why I put it up here. So what I'd said was, 
Okay. I know you don't want to hear don't chase ketones, but don't chase ketones. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to leave this up here so I can refer back to it. When you first get started on keto, a lot of times you get higher numbers because what the meter is measuring is excess ketones in your blood, ketones that your body is not currently using. So that's generally higher when you first get started. The longer you do keto, the more fat adapted you become and your body, everybody reacts differently, but your body can become very efficient at using fat for fuel where it doesn't even need to go through that whole process. So what ends up happening is, is you always have low extra, I call them extra, ketones floating around in the blood. If you want higher extra ketones, two things. You could take products which will help convert ketones like MCT, which converts directly to ketones. Um, also, acacia fiber can help with that kind of stuff a little bit. Uh, or the bottom line is ketosis is a starvation mode. It's how your body deals with starvation. Yeah. So if you way under eat the amount of fuel that your body requires, you will go into ketosis. You're, you will have more ketones. Right. right? Like you, you know, you're you're already going to be in ketosis if you're eating this lifestyle. But you're going to have more ketones. Why? Because it's converting it and it's also slowing down your metabolism. So it's got all of these extra ketones floating around. Again, not doctors or nurses or anything like this. But we, I've, I've extensively studied this. So you can actually have somebody who's eating 500 calories a day of pure sugar and they could actually get into ketosis because if they're working out and their body requires a lot of energy, 500 calories isn't Starving enough. for them. So they could end up start producing ketones. It's not efficient, but the longer you do this, the lower your ketones can be. So that could be part of it. It also could be when are you measuring, you know? Now, as far as the second part, so there probably, what I wanted to say is there, there probably is nothing wrong with your meter. It's you've been doing this for a while. I've checked out several meters. We've reviewed several meters and we've also not on camera checked very, uh, you know, a lot of other ones. They all come within a point or two. They really, they're very, very close. What I like about the new Keto Mojo, I was not a fan about the old one and I was pretty vocal about that is I didn't like the sticks being in the little container because yeah. they're exposed to air and they get contaminated and now they're not as like exact. That's now that they've put them in packages, they're right on par with a lot of the other companies. As far as experimenting ketosis, it's better to be checking your blood sugar. Yeah. We actually did a video, which I'm going to link right up over Rachel's head, where we eat a full on keto meal. Super keto. Nothing in that meal would kick you out of ketosis. Yet you see our ketones go down. Why? Because you just ate energy. So your body doesn't need to produce a bunch of ketones. You've got them in your blood. It's going to use those up and then it's going to use the fat in your meal. And then when it needs more, it's going to produce more. It doesn't mean you're not functioning on fat. Well, and it, it it makes sense, right? Because we were just saying that ketosis is is basically a state of starvation of right. sorts. So when you eat anything, you are no longer starving yourself. There's there's calories and energy there. So right. yeah, it's always going to look like it's registering lower, but it's not kicking you out of ketosis. Right. And checking an hour after, it doesn't mean much. I mean, you really need to be checking much, much later. That's why people say, when is the best time to check my ketones? Midday before your meal. Don't check after your meal because it's it's gonna be, it's got nothing to do with what you eat. It's got to do with you're giving your body fuel. So it's gonna use up the ketones that are floating in the blood and then it's gonna start producing more with your food. Again, it's a starvation mode. Uh, next one is from Jan. Hey Jan. Jan said, hi everyone, new member here. Welcome. I've been on keto for 16 weeks. I've lost 44 pounds so far. Wow. I feel very pleased with how things are going, but I definitely noticed the weight is coming off slower at the age of 58 than it did at 38. 44 pounds That's in 16 a lot. weeks is good. Yeah, and sustainable. Uh, however, I remain motivated, which is a good thing because I have 60 more pounds to reach my goal. Once I get there, 
I may make a second goal. We'll have to see. Okay. Uh, recently, I saw someone writing about Joe's pancakes. Where can I find the pancake recipe? I've been to the website and I can't locate it. That's because it's not on the website. Right. Uh, I have yet to do that. Haven't had time to get on the website, but it is in the video. So I'm going to leave a link for that video right over Rachel's head. Um, you can follow the video or if you look in the video description, it does have exactly how to make it. Super quick. Um, now, I can tell you right now, it is. One scoop of keto chow or one serving if you're using like these individual bags. Um, four eggs and one and a half ounces of softened cream cheese. And a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder if you want them to be super fluffy, which you no, do. No, you don't need that. You don't need you it. You need it. <laughs> If you haven't done it with the baking powder, do it because it's awesome. Okay, next one is from Essie. Hey, Essie. They say, I have been on keto since the end of July and have steadily lost weight. 65 pounds to be exact. Wow. Yay! This week, I got what I believe to be a bad cold, upper and lower respiratory congestion. I'm sorry about that. My question is, when you are sick, do you tend to see your weight loss increase even though you have not changed anything in your eating? We'll be sick because cause you to gain some weight. Maybe some fluid retention from being sick? That's, you yeah. nailed it right there. First of all, um, medicines can cause you to gain weight. It's generally going to be water weight and fluid uh, retention. Yeah. It's inflammation. So anytime I get an allergy attack, and for some reason, I just want to punish myself. I get on a scale whenever I have an allergy attack. Don't do that. But I can go up seven, eight pounds overnight with an allergy attack. That's just inflammation. Can it's, we? Get off the scale. Can we just agree to not get on the scale when we're sick? I, I just know. feel like that's fair. I, I need to do that. If you had to take medicine, don't get on the scale. I think it's funny, though, because you will tell me, whatever you don't go do, don't get on that scale. And then I will hear you go in the bathroom and you hear ping, and I'm like, you just told me that I wasn't talking to me. I, I was wasn't talking, talking to, to me, I was talking to you. <laughs> talking to me. Uh, next one is from Rachel. Hey, Rachel. She said, hey, my people. Hey, my what people. What tracking app do you use? I've used Car Manager, and I'm not sure I love it. Wanted to see what others use. Chronometer. So, so we highly recommend Chronometer. Now a lot of people think Chronometer is a difficult. I find it very easy so long as you are not using it to determine your macros, which right. you shouldn't be using any of them to determine. Don't use Carb Manager, Don't Carb let them boss Tracker, you. any of those things to determine your macros. Why? They're not very good at it. Right. They're using percentages, which is not the proper way to determine your macros. Your macros need to be determined based on your basal metabolic rate, based on your goal weight, based on your age and the amount of protein you need. I highly suggest either using the one that we have on our website, which helps you with the one-to-one, -one, using Maria Emmerich's uh, calculator, or you can go use Keto Savage's calculator. But do not use the ones like in Carb Manager, and especially don't use the one in Chronometer. Chronometer is great for tracking because everything in it is accurate. Right. It's not like verify Rachel it. going in there and putting, hey, this serving of, you know, Lily's chocolate bar has zero carbs. Because I want it to. Because it doesn't because it's got a bunch of total carbs. Yeah, but I want it to. I know, but you- I'm gonna put what I want in there. You need to be accurate. And that's why we like chronometer. Accuracy. A lot of the other ones are not accurate because you can put whatever you want for the ingredients. And you'll see that too. Like you'll go in and you'll say like, I'm gonna, you know, have a, uh, you know what I mean? A, a bacon or I'm going to have, I want to say heavy whipping cream is usually the one where right. it's like zero. Like, you know, they were talking about before. It's like zero carbs. And and you'll see one is zero and one is one and one is two. And you're like, this is the same brand. How right. can they have this so much variety? So I'm going to use the zero one. But you're tricking Heck yourself. Yeah. But you're not tricking yourself. You're not. You you're, know? Your, your body knows. The other place it really comes knows. into play is with sugar alcohols. People will go in and they'll deduct the sugar alcohol and say, like, again, this chocolate bar has zero total carbs. Right. Well, it doesn't. It's because they're deducting the sugar alcohol. Well, not everybody wants to deduct sugar alcohol. Some people, sugar alcohols affect them in weird ways. So <sighs> you want to know how much is in there. That's why we recommend chronic. Ignorance, maybe bliss in the moment, but it's not long term. That's true. <laughs> Uh, next one is from Bronson. Bronson says, hey fam, what is one physical thing you've done recently that you either couldn't do before, haven't been able to for a while, or never thought you would be able to do? So I saw this post and I wanted to present it here in case somebody's not in our Facebook group. I want to let us know, 
down in the comment section. What is something that you couldn't do before? Right. That you can do now. Or something that you want never. to do that is your goal. And something that, or maybe something that you've never thought that you could do. I never thought that we would paddleboard. I, that's what I was thinking when I saw it. Never. I know what Ever. I, I, I think after the inspirational post before, I know what you need to do. And what is that? Go skydiving. No, uh, no, that, no. No? No. It's fun. No. I'll go horseback riding. Skydiving. That was something that like I could not do pre-keto because I was, I wanted to go horseback riding, but I was past the weight limit. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to not, you know, I didn't want to like make that horse have a bad day, basically. Uh, next one is from Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer said, this is worth repeating every single day. Aww. Wake up every morning and tell yourself, I can do this. Jennifer, thank you so much for that reminder. Because yes, we need to, we, we need to get cannot out of our vocabulary. Right. That's, that was old. That was pre-keto. Right. Because right now anything is possible. And it's funny. That was always a rule we had with our kids. It's so, a so growing up. I used to say things to my mom like, I'm starving. And that was like Ooh. a no-no word in my That's house. That's a declaration of it war. It was like, yeah, you're not starving. Like, you know, people in Ethiopia are starving. Yeah. You're hungry. You're not starving. Our rule with the kids, I never, ever, ever want to hear you say I can't do it. Right. Right? Like, don't tell me you can't do it because you're quitting. You can do this. You can, I at least want to see you try. Like, that yeah. was the biggest thing is they, would, they wouldn't even try. So like, yeah, we have to get that word can't. Out of all vocabulary. We can do this. We can do this. You can do this. Yeah. We can do this. Okay, so there is one more, and it's going to be from Peggy. Hey, Peggy. She says, down nine pounds since Monday. Tuesday decided to do carnivore for at least seven days, no cheese, and added intermittent 18-6 fasting. But today, I did a 24-hour fast and have not done that in a year. I feel amazing. I thought it was time to get back to the basics, and it's working. That is awesome. And I think that that's the thing is that... Sometimes, like, it's just, you got to cut things out and get back to the basics. People ask, like, why did you do an egg fast? Well, because we had a lot of eggs and Rachel had a silly idea. Yeah. But uh, it, it comes down to, is there a magic in just eating eggs? No. Is there a magic in just having a beef and butter fast or doing a fat fast? No. It's not even necessarily there's a magic in eating, like, super strict carnivore with no cheese. What it is, it's eliminating things. So when you eliminate everything but one it makes it really easy to now slowly start add things back in and go like okay that's what was causing me the problem it also helps you to refocus it does you know we we're beach people because we live in florida and we've been to the beach a lot and if you've ever been to the beach you will set up your chair and your blanket and all of your little belongings, your little cooler there and you go swimming and you don't even realize it's happening but you sort of drift down the beach right and all of a sudden you'll look up and you'll be like, I feel like I'm in the same place, but my chair is way clear down over there. Right. And so you will have to swim back to get to that point where you started. And you know, that's something that we have to refocus on too. Where we started, we were having success. If you've drifted to a place where you're no longer having success, go back to that place where right. you remembered having success on keto and it was probably a very simple version of keto and just get back to that place. That was pretty good. Did you just come up with that? I did. That is, you're pretty Yay, smart. Yay, <laughs> Rachel. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch. Uh, now, if you like seeing videos like this, there are 115 more of Yay! them, which I'm gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon in that way every single time we have something to celebrate, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.